I'm John Mukeni Namai. We are both storytellers from Kenya. Together with the meteorologists, we travel to the climate front lines of northern Kenya to discover how people there are using indigenous knowledge to adapt to climate change. This podcast, Listening to the Rainmakers, shares what we learned on our journey. Episode 8, Bringing It Home. So what have we learned from our journey? A tremendous amount. Firstly, it really seems like climate is security and vice versa. This community are really, really suffering. And um, we need to see how we can dedicate climate services to support the lifeless, the communities uh, occupying those particular regions. Uh, maybe the, the kind of communications we have been using is not appropriate. Um, there is also a push from Linda. She has been advocating about the climate, uh, climate and security nexus to be uh, um, to be angered under the UN framework um, uh, because the argument is that um, climate change and variability is um, reducing the productivity and limiting the, 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 the exploitation of resources in the Great One of Africa. And you find that the youths are idle and in so doing, they are recruited into extreme, extreme cells. And at the end of the day, they cause havoc and insecurity in the region. But equally, we saw that people are not powerless in the face of this situation. They have been creatively adapting for a long time and both storytelling and traditional knowledge are at the center of this. Which brings us our second learning. It seems like storytelling and the arts really are vital ingredients in climate adaptation. It was great to hear our meteorologist colleague Callistas reflect on what it was like traveling with storytellers. <laughs> they are just made friends here. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I think it, um, it was very interesting watching storytellers huh? <laughs> as you transfer through different landscapes. So basically, when we left this place, when we left Nairobi, it was not that way very chilly, it was in the morning. I was just observing uh, colleagues who are non meteorologists, how they are behaving. Then on the way, we, we met uh, certain weather conditions, very foggy and very cold. You find in the region, uh, med departments are only at the headquarters, at the capital cities. And um, they are struggling sometimes in terms of investing in communication channels that uh, are not user centered to the some of the communities who are seeing on the ground. So I just reflected what happens, and maybe it's not by their design. The how the government sometimes uh, uh, come up with the policies for adaptation, mitigation, or climate services. Sometimes it's a top down, not bottom up. Okay, so that um, um, some communities are left behind. I realize how these people value value entertainment, value music, and um, um, and the, the the music itself had some kind of communication. They were communicating. They were communicating, uh, sending message to the leadership. 
um, of the community. And um, later on, I, I also observed that if you want to engage these communities, you need to spend some more time with them. And this is what it was revealed that uh, Trukanas are very shy. Sometimes um, they take time for you to, to open up. In particular, it feels quite clear to us now that storytelling has a lot to contribute to creating dialogue between traditional and scientific knowledge. Here's Callistus again talking about working with us. I think I really enjoy it. They, they look at uh, some of these things from different perspective. And um, it, uh, it, pro- it brought some sense into me in terms of um, how the learning is passed around. Either like in the communities we used to have some form of uh, platforms and methods of passing a kind of information to different generations. How is it being interfered with? Either through religion, either through education, and um, with the the current uh, form of education. So it brought uh, some kind of senses to me from the climate science uh, part of the world to recognize what kind of model can we put in a place such that uh, can support communities' ways of life in terms of either conserving or integrating some of these kind of systems so that uh, this knowledge is not lost in the process but it can be used for the current and future communities. Uh, I, I, I think for me, it was a, a key learning uh, thing from our colleagues. I, I, I used to really to pester them and uh, ask them more questions and uh, test them. And um, some of the projects, like some of the programs and the projects we are really signing for adaptation and mitigation. Uh, I remember putting a question, how can we apply storytelling in some of these particular programs and the projects? And finally, there's a lesson for the two of us as storytellers around what we can do in our professional lives. You know, in Nairobi also, like, or in, in Kenya, like when storytelling, it, it is seen as, as entertainment. It is It has this particular idea of what it constitutes. But, you know, if we were to take these experiences and, and kind of really sort of showcase them to an audience that isn't somebody who is necessarily going to be entertained by something, but sort of inviting um, different stakeholders, you know, different you know people who are involved in climate change, people who are involved um, working up in, in northern Kenya, um, you know, we passed the Kokuma camp and you know one of the questions was like these guys the you know the Turkana they see these massive water tanks for the refugees and then they've been struggling with water issues forever but they're not you know not necessarily allowed to access this water so you know what about the the sort of the conflict there so if we're able to kind of bring all of these and create a narrative around that that really kind of all these threads that we've been talking about just kind of pull them into some kind of story so that when people are are observing it or experiencing it they're able to kind of pull out the threads that are of particular interest to them, um, then actually it kind of opens up actually the power of how a story can lead to X, Y, Z or further conversation. Um, and maybe just use that as something in order to kind of push the conversation forward or or maybe a pilot project for, you know, something else in the future where we are looking at actually how can ITK be even further um, revitalized or in, incorporated into, um, you know, education or, or kind of use storytelling as a way of, of changing the narrative or changing mindset in order to, um, you know, kind of, I don't know, make make things, it sounds really silly, but, you know, to make things better in a sense, or just to explore a different way of, of adapting to climate change, because climate change isn't going to go. You know, there is nothing you can say, like, how, what would you wish? We wish for more water. We wish that the rains would be more regular. It's impossible 
to guarantee that. But, you know, human beings, we adapt to situations. We And we adapt because we have access and exposure to the ways that other people have done things or, you know, new ideas. So how can we, we how can we feed all of that into a new narrative so that, um, you know, maybe we can just sort of explore different ideas of how, how people can move. So, yeah, that's that's basically what one of the thoughts. And we thought of, I've not been to the ICPAC offices, but maybe doing it outside of a theatrical space, like doing it in a in a space where, you know, where where climate is, is all around us. So that was just one, one thought. Thanks to our project partners, Adverse Kamba and ICPAC, and the project funders, the British Council.